today I felt kind of bored, so I thought of making a YouTube tutorial because why not? Um, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple uh, team uh, swap UI in Roblox. So first you want to go into Roblox Studio and create a base plate or uh, do this in whatever game you already have. Uh, sometimes the teams uh, folder won't show up, so I'll teach you how to make a team, uh, make the team folder show up if it's not there. So go into starter GUI, insert object, and then uh, create a team, and then cut it, and then paste it. And it should create the teams folder and put it into it. Uh, so I'm just going to do simple classic red, blue, uh, red and blue teams. Uh, so you want to set that to blue, bright blue. I usually set it to bright red, bright blue. Um, okay, next you want to go into your starter GUI, uh, create a screen U GUI, uh, and then name this whatever you want. Usually, if you, specifically for choosing your team, you just want to team chooser. Uh, now you want to create a button. Uh, you can name this... Uh, I guess team button or choose button and this button's function will be to open the team chooser now I'm not gonna make it too fancy because I want this video to be short but easy to follow uh, so I'm just gonna position it in the bottom left corner uh, you can put it wherever you want doesn't matter as long as it is visible now this one could be going over how to like <clears throat> how to make it not visible when you don't want it visible and all that stuff, but that it's up to you to learn after the video. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. There, okay. Uh, now you want to create a frame, uh, and I'll just team, name it Team Picker, and then I will set its anchor point to 5.5, five, which is the middle of it, and then you want to uh, position it in the middle of the screen. Now this just makes it easier for me, but you can put whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to make this 300 pixels or 700 pixels, 400 pixels. It may be too big for your screen, and uh, you can honestly do a better job at scaling it so that it's uh, consistently sized with the monitor, but uh, I don't care. And then lastly, you'll have to pick uh, a button type. Now some people will want to use an image button but I'm just going to use a text button because that's easier for me. I don't have to find a graphic uh, and I will just make this size half of the frame and then down to the bottom of the frame. I will make this the red button and then I will uh, change the background color down in properties to red and then I'll change the text to red T. And I will just scale this for simplicity. Honestly, going to be pretty ugly, but whatever. Um, and then what I will do is set this so that it's all the way on the right, and then make the size minus half. So then it will go into the frame. And I will do the same for this by changing it to blue and changing the text to team blue. Now we got that, we want to make this not visible, so make it invisible for now, and then go and create a local script, and I will just call this team manager, or team picker. Now a local script is on the client, so it can't do things normally when you have filtering enabled uh, on the server, and since the teams are handled by the server and you want that to replicate to all the other players, uh, you want to do team changing on the server. So I'm just going to create a remote event in replicated storage, and I will t call this uh, team change. And then in server scripts uh, service, I will create another object, and I'll call make that uh, script, and then a team change handler. Now this will be the thing that changes all of the player's teams. This would be where you make all the logic for changing people's teams and uh, finding out if they should change teams, if you want to do something like that where you limit it so that not uh, teams can't be imbalanced and all that stuff. First variable I want to make in your team uh, server script is local 
um, look, you want to get that remote, so I will just call it remote, and then that is in game, replicated storage, wait for child, and team change. So now the reason that I do wait for child is because sometimes when you're doing a, a script, it will execute before everything loads in the game. So you just want to make sure that the server waits for that uh, remote to actually be added there. Okay, the next, uh, you want to create a function. I will call this team change. And in this function, uh, we will get the player and uh, the team name they want to change to. Now, I will also create a variable called teams. And this will get the team folder. And all you need to do to do that is get the service teams or just game.teams. And uh, here I will check if the team exists by going teams find first, not find first ancestor, find first child. And we give the name of the team, the team name. Uh, and then uh, if the team exists, so if the team actually is there, then we set the player's team to that team. And it's as simple as that. And then we want to connect this remote, we do remote dot on server event, and we want to connect that. And instead of typing in that, uh, we will type team change. Now remove two parentheses. Here. Okay. Uh, and we will be expecting the player and team name. Now go back to your team picker in your client, uh, which is in under the team chooser UI. We first want to get the UI, so that's just script.parent. And then we want to get the uh, button, so we will do uh, button equals UI, wait for child, uh, choose button, since that's what we named it. And the same reason we do wait for child, we do it here because sometimes the script will execute before uh, the other things are added. So uh, we're just doing this to make sure, and I misspelled button somehow, so button. Um, and then we want to get the frame, and uh, with frame, we just do UI, wait for child, team picker. Actually, we'll change this name to team picker frame, just so that it doesn't get confused with the script. And then um, we want to get the red and blue button. So we'll do red button, blue button, and we'll do frame, wait for child, red, and then we'll do wait for child, blue. Okay, so we've gotten everything. Now we need to get the remote. So I'll just do game.replicated storage, wait for remote team change. Uh, which is the rem remote we had, and then uh, and now we'll get the team. So we'll create a function uh, that handles team change, and uh, all we'll need to pass in is the name of the team, and then send this to the remote by doing fire server, and uh, we just provide the name. Uh, now we need to connect the buttons. So the first red button, the mouse, and uh, we'll do red button, mouse button to click, and then we'll connect that. Function, we create a new function. Uh, and this will just fire anytime we click the button. And we will do team change and provide red as the name. And then for this, blue button, and we will just do and finally we need to connect the regular button god i misspelled these we'll create a new function for that as well and instead of doing the team change well we'll just toggle the frame visibility on and off all right so this expression just basically means uh, we're setting the visible uh, property of the frame to what it isn't. And we should pretty much be done with this team picker. So now if we go press play, 
and press choose team. And you can see I'm on team red. And I press that. Now I'm team blue. I'm team red. So uh, thanks for watching.